I am Pastor David Becker, Pastor of St. John Lutheran Church. <clears throat> Thank you for turn, tuning in today on this Thanksgiving Day. It's also, um, we th also thank KKIN Radio for broadcasting this service. It's also available online at stjohnaitkin.org. At the present time on Sunday mornings, we're holding in-person services at 9 a.m. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We now confess our sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a call and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you've made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks to your bent for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson comes from the Old Testament book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, and I'll begin at the first verse. The whole commandment that I command you today you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these forty years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you, and let you hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments, the Lord your God, by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of hill, whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he's given you. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson, our epistle lesson, comes from Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 4, and I'll begin to 6 verse. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at length you've revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of, placing, of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving, except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel lesson is taken from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 17, I'll begin at the 11th verse. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered the village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was the Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Today is Thanksgiving, and God gives us so much to be thankful for. Um, there are things, uh, certainly, that we can be thankful for. We can make a list of them. Sometimes, though, we're not always in a thankful mood. Sometimes things have happened in our lives that we might say, what do I need to have to give thankful for. In the epistle lesson, St. Paul talks about that. He says, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. We don't always have everything we want, but what's the secret? I can do all things to him who strengthens me. In our gospel lesson for today, we hear about ten people who had an opportunity and a reason to thank God. The ten people had been healed by Jesus from a terrible disease called leprosy. It was a skin disease that caused really bad sores on people's skin, and these sores wouldn't, wouldn't heal. Uh, now we can treat leprosy with medicines called antibiotics, but during Jesus' time, people would eventually die from this disease, and maybe the worst part was 
They could not be with other people at all, not their family, not anyone. So these ten men, from a distance, cry out to Jesus and say, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And uh, Jesus had mercy on them. He healed them, all ten of them. Um, what a wonderful God that we have in Jesus. But sadly, only one of those who was healed came back to thank Jesus. How many were healed? Ten were healed. How many came to thank Jesus? Only one of them. And what does Jesus say? Rise and go, your faith has made you well. Well, when we believe, we have faith. And that's a wonderful gift that Jesus gives us too, faith. And along with that gift, he gives us other gifts as well. Um, when we have faith, he not only makes us well, but he saves us. He saves us. Um, he did that by dying on the cross for us. Uh, when we believe in him, our sins are washed away forever. And we know that one day we'll be living with Jesus in heaven. Amen. We now confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. Thank you for tuning in today. Our text are, is our Old Testament lesson, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 to 10, of which I just want to read the closing words. And, and you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he's given you. Here ends the read of our text. Sand, rocks, nothingness. That's what the children of Israel had seen for 40 years. And it was their fault, their own fault, or at least their parents' fault. That's because earlier, when, they had, when their parents had had the opportunity to enter the promised land, they didn't trust God. They thought the people were living, who were living in the land were so big and strong, so they were afraid. We might wonder, though, why were they afraid? They had seen God, seen what God had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Why didn't they trust God? You would think they would have trusted God. They had seen how God parted the Red Sea. But still, they didn't trust God. The punishment for their lack of faith was that they would wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Now they were being given a second chance. They were standing on the border of the promised land. And Moses says to them, The Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, fountains and springs flowing out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack, lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of hill, whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat before, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This sounded so good to them. They had learned their lesson, hopefully this time, they trust would trust in God. In the 40 years of wandering, God had not abandoned them. He had given them their daily bread. It was called manna. He also gave them water from a rock that Paul tells us followed them. In their 40 years of wandering, their clothes and shoes did not wear out. 
for all, all of that and for the good land the Lord was giving them, Moses tells them to bless the Lord your God. Or, in other words, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Today, we are celebrating Thanksgiving. In school, we're taught that the pilgrims were the first to give thanks. But maybe it was really the children of Israel who were the first to celebrate Thanksgiving as they entered the promised land and as they eat or ate food that they had not eaten in a long time. Now there are some similarities and contrasts between the pilgrims and the children of Israel. The pilgrims left England to escape persecution. Children of Israel left Egypt to escape slavery. The pilgrims sailed across the Atlantic for 66 days. The children of Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. The pilgrims knew that they should give thanks to the Lord. The children of Israel, well, they needed to be reminded to give thanks. Why did they need to be reminded? Well, think about it. It's true God had taken care of them for well over 40 years. It's also true that God has taken care of some of us for well over 40 years. But how often haven't we done what the children of Israel did in their 40 years of wandering? That is, grumbled and complained instead of giving thanks. To answer that question, we probably have to say too often. How often have we done just what they did? Take God and his good gifts for granted. Despite the children of Israel's faithlessness, God still took care of them. Oh, sure, there were times when he disciplined them, but he was always there for them. He never let them down, not once. That's true, even though there were multiple times when the children of Israel let God down. What's true for them is true for us. God is always going to be there for us. For all that, just like the children of Israel, we need to be reminded to bless the Lord your God. We should give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. And we should remember to give thanks, not just once a year, not just on a holiday we call Thanksgiving. We should give thanks every day. That's what St. Paul is telling us in our epistle for today when he writes, Do not be anxious about anything but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God, that includes the peace of knowing that he will never leave us or forsake us. The peace of God will guard our hearts and our minds and help us to keep from grumbling and doubting when the devil tries to use um, those doubts to turn us away from God. So instead of grumbling and doubting, we give thanks. And remember, God will never leave us or forsake us, even though that's what we deserve for our sin. God will never leave us or forgave, forsake us because of what Jesus did for us on the cross. He took the full punishment for our sin. That includes being abandoned by God. Through Jesus, we have the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. And we receive these good gifts through faith in Jesus. And even faith is a gift of God, a gift for which we can give thanks. We can give thanks also for the good land he's given us to live in now. And we can give thanks for the good land, the promised land of heaven, in which we will live with him forever. Amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your, your, your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. Most gracious God, who gives us so freely of your bounty, we call to remembrance and glad thanksgiving your loving kindness and tender mercies. 
for the world in which we live, for its fruitfulness and order, for its beauty and its wonder, for the life that you've given us here to enjoy. We praise you, O oh God, for our home, for our families, for our friends, for the fellowship we share, and for the love that lifts our hearts and nurtures our spirits. We praise you, O oh God for the common blessings of our everyday life, for food and clothing, for shelter and rest, for work and leisure. We praise you, O Lord, for this land that we love, for our nation's heritage of liberty, for the sacrifices of our forefathers, for all noble hopes and efforts that mankind may be one in brotherhood and peace. We thank you, Lord for your gracious gifts to our minds and spirits, for memory that links us to the past, for hope that leads us to the future, for courage in times of trouble, for patience in tribulation, for wisdom in perplexity, for faith in every moment and love at all times, we thank you, Heavenly Father. For yourself, O oh God, for your majesty and power, for your wisdom and goodness, for your justice and truth, for your Son, your blessed gift of love, through whom we have the forgiveness of all our sins. For your Holy Spirit, who enlightens our hearts, we thank you, O God. So direct us in thought, word, and deed, that our gratitude may be reflected in how we live. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Once again, I'm Pastor David Becker of St. John's Lutheran Church of Aiken. I pray that you'll have a blessed Thanksgiving.